Yeah, so wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. It is wonderful to see you all. My name is Michael Smith, the National Education Manager of Genome Canada. And yes, I am back for a, another Genome Canada Instagram Live. And oh, what will we be talking about today? Well, the quilt binder attachment. I'll flip this around. Oh, yes, because, as always, there's so much to demonstrate with the Genome quilt binder set. So yes, let me remove that. And yes, very importantly, I wanted to say right off the top, again, since I had been away for a couple of months, oh, do you know Janome is now celebrating 75 million machines sold since 1921. Isn't that amazing? So you can get this fabulous pack of 25 blue bobbins from your Janome Canada dealer to celebrate 25 million machines. Isn't that incredible? Now, if blue isn't your color, though... Then, oh yes, we have many more, like we originally had the blue butterflies, and then we've got the pink cherry blossoms, but, ooh, also available from your Genome Canada dealer, this very cool Tudo embellishment holder. So here we've got our red bobbins or even our 100th anniversary pink bobbins. We still have some of these. So you can double check with your Genome Canada dealer. But this Tudo embellishment holder you'll see is an A-frame can sit up at your table with all of your tools, your extra bobbins. Even your Genome quilt binder set will fit in this. Or how about, you know, the magnets? If you've got an embroidery machine, the magnets keep in there. Your extra your screwdriver, your uh, seam ripper, the um, tweezers, or again, this was fabulous. This is a multi-tool. It's a stiletto on one side and it's a seam ripper on the other that are fabulous. Genome Canada dealers, gem sewing, uh, gifted me. Isn't that very sweet? So again, that you can keep all of your handy tools, including your Genome quilt binder set, all tucked away in here. So isn't that cool? Again, available from your Genome Canada dealer. And again, keep all those fabulous bobbins. So, the quilt binder set. There it is in a blister pack, and there are two. So, double check with your Genome Canada dealer. So, this one is nine millimeters, and you'll see Genome quilt binder set, and it says nine millimeter wide max, an easy set bobbin compatible. You'll see there, easy set bobbin compatible. Oops. Oh, I hope we're back there. I just said paused with internet issues, of course. <laughs> so what the easy set bobbin is here, if you look down at your needle plate, that this little thread cutter at the side of your bobbin cover, this is what we refer to as the easy set model. And I think pretty much all of our nine millimeter machines are easy set compatible. So then this is the blister pack that you need. Again, that says nine millimeters and again, easy set compatible. So then there's the blister pack. And again, on the back, it shows you what is included. And the why that is important uh, to get the correct one for your machine is because, whoops, there is another one. You'll see this is the base plate for the 9mm Easy Set. This is the base plate. They look the same except for this is actually the bobbin cover. This is where your bobbin cover is. And the secret to this quilt binder attachment is, again, that's the bobbin cover, is that you take this bobbin cover out of your machine and then this base plate goes in place of that bobbin cover. Don't lose this. <laughs> now, again, if I put this bobbin cover from my easy set, I've got the CM17 here, and put that bobbin cover on this base plate, you see that fits exactly. So, whereas if I put my bobbin cover on this base plate that's more rectangular, 
you'll see, oh no, that does not fit at all. That doesn't work. So therefore, this base plate was for previous machines like the, uh, oh, 11,000 and the 6600 and the 7700. And I found out uh, at the Janome Sewing and Learning Center, this will fit actually this rectangular bobbin cover that isn't easy set. Uh, it will fit the 4120, as I've written here to remind myself. <laughs> so again, you it will fit certain machines. So double check with your Janome dealer, and of course double check our accessories guide on janome.ca. But you'll see here that comes with the uh, quilt binder set comes with, again, the base plate. This is the actual binder that folds your binding strip all in one step. It folds it and you will stitch it down all in one step. So that is how the magic happens of this quilt binder set to quickly and easily finish off your quilts or your table runners, your placemats, even tote bags. It works so beautifully. It comes with the screws to attach it to your needle plate, and then you're going to attach this binder to the base plate. Now, these uh, the presser feet are included. This is the wider 9mm one for your 9mm Easy Set models, and then this is a 7mm foot that again goes with the base plate that is more rectangular. Again, the machines like the 11,000 and the 6,600 and 7,700, those were seven millimeter wide machines. So they will take this presser foot. So again, this is why you need to double check with your Janome dealer to make sure you get the correct quilt binder set for your machine. Now there are easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions in your blister pack. So again, you may uh, dispose of the plastic, but keep your cardboard. And one of uh, our fabulous viewers had uh, once uh, commented that she keeps the cardboard here of her blister pack in page protectors in a binder. So that way she always has it. So here, then when we fold this open, ooh, just like a book. And again, since Janome is Japanese, it folds from left to right, as opposed to right to left. Uh, that stumped me at first. <laughs> but yes, again, you'll see step-by-step -step instructions exactly how to use this, exactly how to install it. But I'm going to go over all that with you here. But yes, step-by-step -step instructions. And again, you can go on our Janome Life blog to find out more because we have written about the quilt binder set so many times. It's really a fast and easy way. I call it down and dirty quilting. Fast and easy way to finish off your binding. Now this quilt I just finished yesterday, hot off the press. I started this at three o'clock and even with interruptions from my fabulous partner Joe, <laughs> uh, I was done this quilt by four o'clock. Uh, this is a, lap a generous lap size quilt. And even with mitering the corners, and I actually stitch up my miters, that's me personally, I stitch up my miters, this was done in an hour. And that is including, again, some interruptions. Had I not been interrupted, it maybe would have been about 45 minutes. But yes, you will see, can you get in nice and close? Yes, here is my miter. Isn't that beautiful? Now I chose to use this multi-step zigzag, but you can use certainly a straight stitch, use a decorative stitch. It's really beautiful. So here are our, again, mitered corners, very beautifully done, quick and easy. The straightaways is where you're really going to save time because that you can sew as fast as you wish. The miters, yes, do take a little bit of time to refine, but just like everything else, practice, practice, practice. We always recommend, this was my very first sample, uh, so we're talking seven years <laughs> that I've been with Janome. Uh, seven years ago, I made this sample uh, placemat, a rectangular piece of fabric. Then, or it could be a square, but we recommend, uh, again, a set of placemats because you've got four corners that you're gonna practice on. And it's the miter that, again, everyone is always uh, perplexed about. So that I'm going to go over here. So here, again, you see I used a straight stitch. 
There's our extra thread that is recommended to leave in the corners when you're doing the miter. That'll help uh, feed this through. And then again, you choose to either hand sew these miters as I do, or you could later cut them off. But again, it's great to start with a, again, set of placemats or something. You've got four corners. So even for my very first attempt... Those, uh, those came out pretty good. I was pretty happy with those. Now, again, will you use your quilt binder attachment for your fabulous quilt entered in at CQA or something? No, they want traditional French fold binding that you would hand sew. But again, down and dirty quilting, like placemats, table runners, uh, baby quilts especially. Or this is my ruler kit bag that we make with the Janome ruler set. And there's instructions how to make this bag. Well, I decided I'm going to use the quilt binder attachment for this bag. And even I had a little bit left over. So I put a strap on my bag so I can uh, put this over my shoulder. So again, there's so many uses for the quilt binder attachment. So you will find, as always, when you have it, you will use it more than you thought. So it's not just bed quilts. You don't have to get in your head, oh, well, I don't make that many quilts. Why bother? Oh, again, so many other projects. So here, the base plate, we remove our bobbin cover. Again, don't lose that. And we're going to put this into the machine. There we are. And then we've got our screws. This larger screw goes into the back here in the hole in the needle plate. And then this one we're going to really screw in firmly. And then this is the actual binder. Now it comes folded like this in the blister pack, but then you're going to fold out this accordion, which is what's going to help feed your binding in here. And then it goes into this. It's like the bias tape makers, if you're familiar with that. So it's going to fold over the binding in thirds and stitch it down all in one step. Now you'll see on my base plate here, because I've used this so often, I decided to put some cellophane tape on my base plate here and then draw uh, lines with a permanent marker then this is exactly where I know I'm going to line up the binder every time. So it saves me a little bit of time. But you do have some wiggle room here to move this binder in relationship to your needle. So when we first attach the binder to the base plate, do not tighten these smaller screws firmly yet, because again, we've got a little bit of wiggle room of where we can adjust this so it feeds exactly how we want. But again, I always do the same thing, so that's why I put the little cellophane tape there. Now you'll see with our foot, this is the W1 foot. We already have a binder foot, which is the W foot. And, oh, you can go back to the A to Z with Janome series on Janome HQ YouTube or on the Janome HQ Instagram uh, page. Then I've got the quilt or the uh, binder foot is the W foot. This is the W1 foot that comes with the quilt binder. And again, you'll see it's got a little groove here that they recommend that's your needle drop position, left-hand needle drop position. But again, because of this wide opening, you can adjust your needle position to where you would like. Now, we want to use the zigzag needle plate uh, for this purpose, that we can adjust our needle position, and we could use a zigzag if we wish. So I already have a W1 foot on my machine. And then again, I can better tighten these up a little bit. So our binding strip. Oh, Marie Agnes is here. Hello, it is great to see you. I'm going to use our fabulous quilt binder or our fabulous tape binder. Now this was originally designed to use with our Cover Pro machines, and here is the part number there, uh, designed to use with the tape binder, which is similar to the quilt binder, for our Cover Pro machines. But this tape stand, I absolutely love, and I use it for all kind of binding, even if I'm using traditional French fold binding. So it comes in a blister pack there, it's called the tape stand, or tape binder. 
And there we go. There's the blister pack. Order from your Janome Canada dealer. And I love it because, again, it just sits beside our table here. The binding isn't all over the place. We're going to cut our strips two inches wide to start with the quilt binder set. And we roll it all up. It's even better if it's on a Janome pencil. <laughs> I always say it works out better. But we roll it up here. So that way we just plop it on this center spool and it just comes off so easily. That way it's not all over the floor. The cat's not getting to it. It works out really, really good. If you have a big strip of binding, this is my little tip. You put an old scratch CD on top of this little disc, and that makes the, the width here bigger. So then that'll support your bigger strip of binding. Uh, below, you may see that I put some pins, or if you have, you know, the wonder clips and all that, you can keep them down there too. So it's a really great accessory. And again, even with French fold binding, which is traditionally, here's your strip, you know, we fold it in half, and then we're going to stitch this side down to the machine, and then we're going to flip it over to the back side, and we either hand stitch it or we stitch it by machine. That's traditional French fold binding. Uh, and we would typically use, I like using two and a half inch wide strips, but here with our quilt binder attachment, the quilt binder set, we're going to cut again two inch strips. So if you're using a jelly roll two and a half inch strip, you've got to cut them back to two inches. And again, full instructions in the blister pack. So then this is just going to come right off. And again, I'm going to use a straight stitch here, but you could again use a decorative stitch if you wish. And then if you've got the AccuFeed Flex or an even feed or dual feed foot, you could use that. So I'm going to fold this fabric into the little accordion fold here, and they recommend you cut your strip on a diagonal, so then it will feed into the binder a little easier. And then use a stiletto or, oops, a pin, something like that, to help uh, feed this through. And of course, since I'm rushing, <laughs> I hope I won't have any troubles. But then there, so we go right through the mouth of the binder and you'll see, boom, it starts feeding in right away. It starts folding right away. It works so well. Now, this is why we didn't want to tighten these screws immediately because then again this is where we can adjust this binding strip in the instructions it recommends that when your strip comes out then the left edge is about in line with this groove of the foot this opening of the foot and then again your needle would line up to this uh, mark that's on the foot and your strip finishes you start with a two inch wide strip and your strip finishes approximately five eighths of an inch so you could line it up with oh maybe you want your strip to uh, finish off the right end of the strip the folded edge to finish with the edge of your presser foot here so you can totally line that up so now that I have that, I'm going to tighten this up nice and tight since we don't want that to move. Again, the time just goes by so fast. So needle, we're in center needle position. I'm just going to use a straight stitch. I am here on my CN17 though. I'm going to lengthen my stitch. When I do binding, I like to do a 3.0. Uh, as I'm going to go through my quilt sandwich. And then a uh, needle drop position here, instead of center needle position at 4.5, I'm going to move it over to the left. So I'm going to plus it. Now I, oops, I'm going to minus it. Sorry, <laughs> I always go in the wrong position. I'm going to move it over to the left. And again, I could line it up directly on that bar that line, in which case it's going to be about, oh, 2.0, I believe. Yes. Uh, in fact, I want it a little over. I'll do it at 1.8. Now, again, how far you move that needle over to the left is up to you. Definitely sample. You need to test, test, test. 
and then it'll work exactly how you wish. Now this little sample, if you're trying your free motion quilting samples and all that, nothing goes to waste. You use this little sample with your backing, your batting, and your quilt top. Again, you're practicing your free motion quilting. You're not going to throw anything away. You're going to use this for your practice piece. Now, it's always hard to stitch when you've got a camera in front of you, <laughs> but I know everybody likes close-ups. So to start it, I just kind of wedge my quilt in there, and you'll see automatically it wants to fold over beautifully. So I'm just going to start. And again, you'll see on my straightaway, oh, we could just fly. We want to keep the edge of the quilt into the mouth of that binder, that jaw. Now, as an extra tip, another uh, of our viewers said, uh, oh, she likes to serge the edge of her quilt sandwich to keep all the edges together. It helps flattens it out. I thought that was a cool tip. So the cool thing about this binder, though, again, it's different from our French fold way of binding when we typically will stop at our seam allowance uh, width. In the binder's case, we're going to stitch right to the edge of the quilt. So you want to go nice and slow. Now you can uh, bring your stitch in, oh, a little uh, stitch shy, I guess, of the edge. You can stitch one or two stitches shy of the edge of your quilt. You don't want to stitch over the edge of your quilt. That will not produce a good miter. So I'm just going to stop right there at the edge of my quilt. Now, I'm going to raise my needle and raise my foot, but I'm not going to cut my threads. I'm instead going to pull this sandwich out through the back of the binder and even stand up if you wish, and you'll see it's just going to pull... My binding is just coming right off, no problem. Now here is where my binding strip is joined. If you can prevent that uh, fold, that extra thickness, prevent that from going through the mouth of the binder. You can do it. It's a little bit more finicky, takes a little bit more time. It's just easier if you can avoid having like that joint go through the binder. So I'm just going to pull it out a little bit and maybe stop right there. Drop your presser foot. And then now, if you need to, uh, you know, stand up or you can swing, swing this around. Now, trust me, don't get intimidated. It takes me longer to explain this than actually do it. You're going to take your threads, and this is just my way of doing it too. There's many different ways. Uh, you're going to take your extra threads here. And why we didn't want to cut our threads is we want to leave nice long thread tails. And that's going to help us feed our layers in as we go to miter this corner. So here I've got my long thread tails at the front and the back. And then I'm just going to ooh, put those on neatly. And then here you will see... There we go. You will see my strip has already started to fold because it's been through the mouth of the binder. So what I like to do, and again, this could be directly behind you as well. This is why, too, I love here on the CM17, we've got our big carriage and we've got those extra little wings, as I call them, those table supports. So we do have extra uh, room here at the back of the machine. But then I like to, with my fingers, you could even wet your fingers or spray your binding strip. Ooh, I like to get a good crease going of how it will be folded, just like that, because, ooh, you see that center, that center crease. This helps us now open our binding strip, and boom, that center crease is right along the edge of our quilt. Do you see the miter has formed right there on the front, and it has formed right there on the back? So in order to keep this in place, there are a couple of things you could do. Uh, I've sometimes used cellophane tape, so that works, uh, but most, most accurately, sometimes the tape will shift, I do admit. So I use these nice, fine pins. And again, for 
time's sake, I'm going to pin this in to show you the next steps. And again, you take the miters, you refine oops, the miters as long as you need to. And again, it really works well. Again, like most things, the more time you spend, the better. It may seem a little fiddly, but again, you make up the time in your straightaways. So there, I pin with the tip of the pin going in to the miter. The tip of the pin is going in to the miter. Now we go back and we pull this binding strip back through. So we've, we need to pull this all the way back through so we're back at that corner. So, and again, it is more fiddly to explain than it is to actually do. So raising my foot here, let's bring this, oops, back through the mouth of the binder. There we go. And I often will rock it back and forth like this to make sure I'm trying to eliminate any folds, any twisting of the strip. So it's all nice and neat. Get our little thread back here. We can hold it up on our side thread holder if we wish. Now these thread tails, again, these were what we left. And the reason why we left those is I'm going to grab hold of all of those thread tails and get back up to the beginning of where the miter starts. Drop my foot. And then we're going to hold on to these thread tails to help us feed this through to get started. Now, you've always been told, do not sew over pins. But the pins I like using, ooh, are these silk pins. They're called Iris Superfine. They're silk pins if you're sewing garment fabric on your silks and satins and laces and all that. These silk pins are really fine pins. So... I don't mind leaving them in, and we're going to rotate the balance wheel as we're getting over and close to those pins. We're not stepping on the gas, we're rotating the balance wheel, and again, we're already uh, cycling the balance wheel towards us. Once we pass those pins, then it's perfectly fine, step on the gas. Away you go. Again, this is where you're going to save the time is in the straightaways. And again, like everything else, the more you practice, the better. Now I'm just going to cut this off to show you. So because I left that pin in, and when I pinned it in, you see, I didn't go all the way in, like all the way there, that would hit the binder. I just put it in a little bit to hold the miter in place. And same on the back, I didn't want the pin way over here, that's gonna hit the miter. So I just put it in a little bit. And again, walk the balance wheel so you're not in danger of hitting the pin. And again, it's a small, very fine pin. Whereas, oh, look at the difference between like this lemon flavored pin, the yellow pin, uh, that's way thicker. So these I do not use when I'm using the quilt binder. That little pin makes all the difference. We remove that. Ta-da! Now, isn't that bad? I mean, it was a quick, quick demo, but yeah, that's pretty good in my books. And then again, we use these threads if we wish, as I do. I like to secure them and I sew up those miters. And this is where on the back side in particular, if it's off a little bit at the back, you could use your threads to help refine that miter and make it a little nicer. So again, like everything else, practice, you know, really helps, does make it perfect. Although I don't like using the word perfect, especially when it comes to quilting, because then people just get so uptight about it. But again, it really is a fast, easy way to finish off all of your projects. Again, table runners, uh, home deck, maybe your uh, tote bags. And again, you can adjust the, uh, in this case, the straight line of stitching, however far to the left or right as you wish. Again, you can use a decorative stitch. So there, that's not bad at all. Now, when I get around to the backside, oh, I'll just ooh, go back here. So when I get around, now this is just me personally again, how I finish this off, 
you go around, you do all your four miters, and then as you're coming into, you're coming back to the beginning. Now, this is just, again, my way of doing it, but you can do it, you know, however you wish. Here is where I started. So what I'm going to do is just trim this off. Now, again, the traditional way we would do this is probably join on an angle or binding strip and reduce the bulk. And, you know, there's many ways to do the same thing, many ways to finish off your binding. Again, I call this down and dirty quilting. This wouldn't be like quilt show acceptable, probably. But what I do is I just anticipate, oh, there, I need this much. I don't even measure it. So I go to my quilt bind it. Okay, I need this much. I need this much. There. That's about the width of my binder. It's so casual. Again, we just need to, you know, take it easy sometimes and not freak out as much. <laughs> so I just cut off my strip with our little glue stick or lapel stick. Uh, I will glue this down. And again, now I'm rushing because I know I'm over my time. But again, it takes me longer to explain it than it is to actually do it. You just have to do it and get comfortable. So I uh, fold that over so it's a nice finished edge. And then here, I'm just going to overlap it. Now, if I'm concerned, oh, I'm going to overlap that binding strip a little too much, you could rip out your binding strip of where you started a little more. So then like you're not overlapping it. But when you do go to overlap it uh, at some point, I just make sure again, we're going to push that binding strip into the mouth, into the jaw, and I'm going to make sure this new binding strip is going to cover the edge of this old binding strip. So then when this eventually comes over, again, I've already glued it, so it's folded over. And then it's just going to, oops. And again, it would be a little better because I wouldn't be rushing. But then that way that edge is tucked in. You can use your stiletto and tuck it in. And just make sure, again, it's covered. You're going to go really slow, and you're not going to have a camera in front of you, and you're not going to have the pressure of going live. But there. Now, there too, I'm going to raise my needle and raise my foot. I'm not going to trim my threads with the thread cutter. I'm going to leave a nice long thread tail, because then I'm going to sew up this little joint. So even if you need to, again, refine it, you're going to thread up a hand sewing needle and you can help refine, tuck in those raw edges and then sew up that joint. Now, so there, my strip folded out. Again, I was rushing my strip folded out. Normally that would be all tucked inside. Again, if you had to rip up those couple of stitches, sew it back, perfectly fine. That's how I end up doing all of my joints and it works out really really well and it really isn't that bad it really isn't that uh bulky there was my original sample of when i first practiced this uh and again it's really not that bulky and the line of stitching joins together i sewed that up by hand again you really don't notice it's there and again it's really not that bulky so that's just the way i choose to do it you could experiment and do uh, a different way, if you wish. Now, I will say very quickly, too, tape binders, as I mentioned. Oh, yes, there are a couple of different tape binders. They're not called quilt binder. They're tape binders for the Cover Pro machines. And there are different sizes. Again, your quilt binder set finishes at about five-eighths of an inch. Your tape binders there are two sizes. One will finish of about half of an inch. The other finishes at around three eighths of an inch. And you will use, you'll see the mouth is a little more narrow. And instead of a two inch wide strip here, I've got a one and a half inch wide strip. So it finishes more at uh, a half of an inch. And then there's another that you start with an inch and a quarter strip and it finishes off at about three eighths of an inch. So again, the mouth of that 
so you could do very uh, smaller binding. Now, the tape binders, again, are more for the Cover Pro machines. And this is for if you want, it's again more narrow, that you're binding a single layer of fabric. You're not binding a thick quilt with batting in between. So that's why it's recommended for the Cover Pro machine that you're binding, again, a single layer of fabric. It's not so bulky. But we do get questions all the time. Oh, can I use like this binder head with the binder plate here for my sewing machine? Well, yes, you can. The binders themselves can interchange. What can't interchange are the base plates. This is the base plate for this tape binder that attaches to the Cover Pro machine. You can see it attaches very differently. It won't work on the regular sewing machine, the base plate. The binder will, the base plate won't. <laughs> uh, same with your quilt binder set. That base plate will not work on your Cover Pro machine. So if you want to swap out your binder heads, you need to swap out uh, the binder plates. Uh, so then you need this configuration to get this binder head, and it comes with the binder plate for the Cover Pro. And then you need, again, the quilt binder set with this base plate comes together as one unit, and then you can swap the actual binder heads out. <laughs> so I hope I haven't confused you too much there. As always, you can double check with your Janome dealer. So, yes, I must get going because, of course, I went past my time because there is so much to explain. But I hope that really uh, helps explain the quilt binder set a little more. And again, we've got lots of uh, blogs on the Janome Life blog, including there's a little video that I uh, included in one of the blogs that shows you uh, step by step how to miter the corners in a condensed version. I like to be very thorough. That's why my demos always take a little longer. But again, it's faster to actually do it. So, you must get the quilt binder set and just have some fun to play around. So thank you everyone for joining me today and have a fabulous day. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh.